Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is now Saturday, the 22nd of July, 2023. I'm still in Las Vegas getting ready to wrap things up after a very successful day yesterday, getting some equipment ready that we can use in all kinds of situations via Starlink. Very hot here in the desert southwest. Went over to Furnace Creek area. I'll show you that towards the end of today's update. But first, a real quick look at the tropics, what's going on out there. I know a lot of people were pretty concerned about what might happen with 95L. Spoiler alert, I don't think much is going to come of it. We're still just a little bit too early in the climatological scheme of things. Mid-level dry air really being the biggest culprit out there in the deep tropics, which is very typical for this time of the hurricane season. We would normally see not much activity, so this is what is generally expected. All right, so we'll look at that and a few other odds and ends and whatever here on this Saturday. All right, good to have you join in. I do appreciate your time and attention. Let's take a look at what we've got, if I can get everything to work. National Hurricane Center, boy, I tell you what, Don, the overachiever here, uh, maximum sustained winds at 65 miles per hour, as per the latest update from the Hurricane Center. It'll eventually move into much colder water up here, and it is going to dissipate rather quickly, but... For the time being, Don literally making a name for itself, racking up a few ace points overall. That's accumulated cyclone energy, the wind output from the system, a measure and a metric of the quality of the storm. And it's uh, not out of the realm of possibility that it could still become a hurricane. Still, that's pretty impressive from where it came from, a subtropical, spread out low pressure area, and now it's a rather potent tropical storm up in the North Atlantic. Shipping interest, of course, they're going to be monitoring this closely for obvious reasons, but it shouldn't pose too much of an impact to land. Maybe some swells will emanate out from it. I'll try to draw some concentric circles here to give you the idea. Yeah, just something like that. The swells could come out, possibly affecting parts of southeast, uh, the Canadian Maritimes, we'll just call it that. All right, so Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, maybe as far back as the coast of Maine, and eastern New England as a whole. Just something to keep in mind over the next few days. That is wind energy being put into the ocean, so there may be some swells moving across the Atlantic. Here's Invest Area 95L, or AL95 as they call it. We just shorten it and call it 95L. And it's very small overall. 50% probability over the next two days, 70 in the longer term. I don't see much happening with this system, and I shall explain why. First, though, boy, look at Dawn up there. Very small system, has a notable eye feature, limited deep convection. We'll look at it closer in a minute from Dr. Cowan's dashboard there on the current storms part of Tropical Tidbits. And then there's 95L, just too much dry air around. It's not able to grow. Anytime it develops deep thunderstorms, it ingests more of that mid-level dry air and that convection, as we call it, collapses. And you can see there's plenty of dry air sitting out here. Not a lot of African dust. That's still way below normal. And as such, our water temperatures all through this area, of course, are quite a bit above the long-term average. And that's, that's probably going to be a real problem once we get into later August through September. We could have a very busy time of it once the climatology side really kicks in. So... For the time being, I'm not too concerned about this. We'll look at it on the GFS in a moment. I'll show you where I think this moisture will end up. Yes, you folks over here in parts of the windwards are going to have impacts that don't see anything that makes me concerned above rain and wind, kind of breezy, but that can be impactful. So we'll, we'll get to that. First of all, let's look at Dawn real quick. This is the close-up satellite animation infrared. A little bit of deeper thunderstorm activity. That's what these oranges are. That means that the cloud tops are higher in the atmosphere, so they are colder. And the legend that Dr. Cowan, Levi Cowan, has here, indicating that those cloud tops are anywhere from minus 50 to minus 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, so that's pretty cold. That's getting there. That is the deeper convection that we would need to see that would indicate that this is trying to strengthen and the center, the air pressure in the center would be lowering. Yeah, so Don making a run at becoming a hurricane, it does appear. And if it doesn't, 
no big deal. I just think it's pretty interesting up there overall. TD4 is a very little concern. It's not. We won't even worry about it. It died away. Now, real quick over in the West Pack, I do not want to ignore completely what's going on over there. We do have a tropical storm, Doxiri, possibly is how you say that. This is the track map from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, and you can see that this could come up there to the northwest and then cut right across uh, Taiwan, right? So we're going to have to watch that, and then eventually mainland China. Any interest in the Philippines, we should be fine there. So we'll watch this closely. I will certainly talk about it more in detail on my Monday update. This is what some of the different uh, guidance looks like, the GEFS that, of, co of course, is the ensemble forecast system. Now, let's look real quick at 95L and look at it. This is what it looks like here on the infrared. Not much in the way of deep thunderstorm activity. Not very organized. No spiral banding. Very blob-looking, you know, disheveled. Yeah, there's not much concern with it overall. This is what the conglomerate of track data shows for whatever would be there. Pretty strong ridging up to the north, and so that'll keep this thing moving generally west. Look at this even little uh, southwestward dip there. That's very strong high pressure has built in, and that too helps to keep the air modified and kind of drier than normal. Um, but look, it is headed towards the islands over here, so you folks could expect the possibility of some gusty winds, squally weather, locally rough seas when it comes by. Still a few days away, and yes, we can talk about it a little bit more or a lot more if we need to on Monday, all right? Real quick here, looking as we move along, there's the vorticity signature with 95L. Yeah, pretty decent lower-level framework. I talked about that yesterday, but the rest of the house, so to speak, not coming along very well. If the analogy of a framework, you know, we go with that. Yes, the framework is there, but everything else has stalled, all right? So I don't see much happening with 95L uh, in terms of it becoming a name storm or... Anything, And I know people have seen and, and some people have posted those GFS runs from recently where it ended up in the Gulf as a strong hurricane or whatever. You know, it's that time of year. Something could get in there. You never know. But the chances are extremely low that it's going to be from 95L. All right? Near zero, as they say. All right. Um, what else? So the upper level winds, I want to show you this. Some pretty strong troughiness out here overall. You can see the curve of this. No big anticyclones. That's out here in the eastern and central Atlantic. Big old area of upper level anticyclonic activity. This, though, is kind of a huge upper trough carved out. There's another piece of it here, and that's not favorable at all. Nice little upper level anticyclone off the east coast. Basically, the upper level winds in the vicinity of 95L are favorable right there. That's the green. Out ahead of it, not so much, but this will change over time. But it's the dry air, the dry mid-level air. Like I mentioned, anytime it tries to develop deep thunderstorms, it sort of self-destructs, all right? So this is the GFS, and I like this part of the atmosphere. I'll show you this one. Normally, I look at the 850 level. But this is the relative humidity at uh, 700 to 300 millibars in the atmosphere. And we can point out our different players here. Uh, I guess we'll use blue. That should stand out pretty nicely. There's 95L, and for what it's worth, there's Dawn. And then look at all this brown in here. That's your mid-level dry air, and it is plentiful. So let's move this out into time. I'll show you what happens. Uh, keep your eyes down there where I circled for 95L. Moisture envelope, yeah, that's there. And that's going to plow through the islands, it looks like, around Tuesday. So let's back it up a little bit. Looks like around Tuesday, that moisture surge could come through there and that will bring impacts. Let's change the map extent real quick and zoom into the western Atlantic because it shows up a little bit better for us here. So yes, our friends down here in the islands, anywhere south of Guadalupe it looks like, and this could change, uh, you're going to get some moisture from this and you can even see the wind shift. Um, there it is, there's your wave of, so it's low pressure, yeah, it's lower pressure overall. But that's the wave in the easterlies right there. You can see it. That's so cool, isn't it? I think so. And then not much happens after that. We can just keep kind of scrolling through this and watch as it goes into the Caribbean. Nice surge of moisture, no doubt, but it really doesn't amount to much. And now we're out beyond a week's time, so whatever. 
All right. Again, I am in the desert southwest, sitting here in Vegas now. I'm going to be heading down to Phoenix in just a little while to pick up another colleague of mine. Let me come back on and, like I say, talk to you and not just at you. Uh, we are testing all kinds of stuff. The monsoon, the southwest monsoon, the four corners high, if you live out here, you know all about that, is starting to build in. And basically what that means, you get this nice area of high pressure sitting out here, and the clockwise flow around that helps to bring in, this is oversimplified, moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. It's just a huge weather feature. The center of the high has shifted over to the Four Corners region, and that brings in more moisture on a southeasterly flow into the desert southwest, and the monsoonal flow brings in the possibility of thunderstorms, gusty winds, dust storms, flash flooding, but the much-needed moisture, a possibility over the coming days. So Mike and I, that's the uh, my colleague Mike Cornelius, we're going to cover that in uh, the area out here, something like this over the next few days, starting later today. i got to drive to Phoenix, and then tomorrow through Wednesday, we'll be covering it and posting Twitter stuff and Fox Weather and on our Patreon, because I think it's fascinating, and it really does shape the area out here very much so. And in the, the whole process, we will be testing equipment. Test, 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 strategize, plan things, you name it. It's like a working uh, retreat almost, you know, a work retreat that people do. Instead of having quote-unquote fun, we will be working a weather situation, if that makes any sense. It does to me, and as long as you understand it, I guess it hopefully makes sense to you too. Active weather pattern out here, it's not just hot. We do have the monsoonal flow coming in. In fact, it's showing up enough that the Storm Prediction Center now has this area in a marginal. So, yeah, southern Arizona, finally, this is for today. And as we look out towards tomorrow, um, yeah, even there. And then finally on Monday, it starts to spread even more. I bet we get some marginal showing up by Monday, day three. And uh, Mike and I are going to be all in this area through here and then eventually heading to southeast Arizona by Tuesday, Wednesday, or something like that. Anyway, an active pattern for sure. Now listen, yesterday, I want to wrap this up with something I think is important. Went over to Furnace Creek uh, with colleagues Paul Bowman and Matt Clemens. I've worked with Paul a long time, going all the way back to 2005, and uh, he lives in Pahrump, Nevada, and we went over to Death Valley, we were testing our Starlink over there, uh, and like the vehicle tried to overheat. It was nuts. 123 degrees at that visitor center there. And then what is that 174? That's the ground temperature. Paul had one of these infrared thermometers. They're fairly cheap over on Amazon, I think is where he got it. And you aim it at different whatever, and it gives you the temperature. Measuring infrared heat, or in some cases the lack of heat, if it's cooler, right? And that 174 degrees, you think about taking your pets for a walk, and hopefully people out in the desert southwest that live out here, they know this. But visitors that are going to be flocking out there, some of them are going to bring their dogs, and you're going to want them to jump out and try to find somewhere to relieve themselves or whatever. The pavement is hot, the sidewalks are hot, the rocks are hot. There was a guy that was trying to prop his phone on a rock, and then set the timer on his iPhone and then jump over at the temperature sign and get a picture, you know, it counts down. And when he grabbed the rock, it burned him like it was really hot. And actually, Matt helped him with that, that picture. It's a story for another day. Uh, but, like, it's really problematic. And so I just wanted to bring this to your attention. I thought it was really interesting how dadgum hot it is. It's hot enough that it really becomes very dangerous. Uh, and I just think that's part of the interesting aspect of being out here that it's clear blue skies the sun is just beating down on you and it's it's suffocating but it's not like it is when there's a lot of humidity it's very difficult to describe but anyway 174 degrees wow and then i'll end with this this was really cool this is back at paul's house in pahrump a dust devil formed and scooted across the road there and I was like, oh, that is so neat. I've never seen one that close. I ran around, as you'll see, I took off. It's about 113 degrees. And I was like, oh, let me run over here. 
and it's waiting for me behind this tree. I was like, oh, I didn't think it was going to be right there, but there it was, and it came right over me. <laughs> like, you got to be kidding me. But let me show you something really, really neat here. Why do these things form? Well, the wind is coming this way at the low levels, and then the air is rising pretty substantially. And so what do you get? It's hard to draw 3D, but you get a column, right? You get a vortex that forms. Because of that, that's your shear. What a fascinating situation I thought it was anyway. And I got my own personal dust devil. Still probably have some dust and tiny rocks in my hair. I'm going to jump in the shower in a little bit. But, um, yes, an interesting time of it out here. All the different phenomenon. I'm fascinated with it, and it's going to be interesting to see if uh, down in Arizona we get any flash flooding uh, over the next several days as Cornelius and I cover that in Arizona and Utah and whatnot. So stay tuned to that. If we do get the potential threat of something, uh, we will go live on YouTube, so just keep that in mind. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't subscribed, now's a good time to do so. It doesn't cost you anything. Hit the subscribe button, put the notifications on, and when we go live or I post something, you will know about it. All right? I tried to keep it short. It probably ran longer than I anticipated, but hey, you got to see a dust devil run over yours truly, so that's a bonus. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Probably going to be off tomorrow working, not relaxing, uh, but we can post stuff on Twitter, at Hurricane Track, and so forth. And we'll definitely have one, an update on Monday. Wouldn't miss that. All right, so you guys have a good rest of your weekend. As always, thanks for tuning in to me. I am Mark Suddeth. We'll talk again on Monday.